All right, this is Jimmy Cabs taped the broadcast of 5150 interview series in Bulldozer Magazine. We're here in my Zen spot in El Sereno, the uh, a beautiful place where I come to wind down and relax and really just try to regroup here at Holy Grounds Coffee in El Sereno. And I am very privileged and very happy to be here with George Anthony of the Battalion of Saints. How are you? Fine. How are you doing? Besides having in your Zen spotlight, <laughs> enjoy, enjoy it. There's very few places where we could be nice and calm. And also, this is the new Battalion of Saints here. I have Matt Vignair. How you doing? Good. How you doing, brother? Good. Let's start it off. In 1980, the Battalion of Saints yes. came out. We've discussed this before in our prior interviews. One of the things that really bothers me till this day in 2015 is that you do not get recognized, especially you for being the last bat, literally. You do not get recognized for how groundbreaking and how inspirational the Battalion of Saints were. No one was doing what you were doing in 1980 in San Diego, let alone the rest of the country. Yeah. Be that as it may, till this day, the Battalion of Saints has influenced so many genres of musicians, and you still do not get credit for that. How does that make you feel? Well, it's not really much to, to I don't know, I, I, I don't really care, actually, because we just, it, it happened, and we, at the time, we didn't even know what was going on. All we knew is we were playing what we like to play. And everybody always said, oh, you're not really a punk band. And you're not really, so I, want, I don't give a fuck what we are. What, what we play is what we, and what we, how we are is how I am. You know, and to be honest, it's, um, I wouldn't know any other way. You know, if people always tell me, like, you know, did you always, like, want to, I calmed down, like, tried to at once and get married and stuff. I don't know why I did that. It was a waste of time. I, but I have a beautiful son. But, <laughs> uh, but the other time when I quit doing music is because the other person wants you to stop because you're making a mess of your life. And I'm like, uh, actually, no. You know, and then so enough of that. And uh, I, I just feel that playing what we did, we had no idea what we were doing. But we, we did because uh, it came from the heart. Chris and I, when we wrote all the songs, um, we just knew that. We, we liked it, and the faster and harder and more outlandishly we could play and more pissed off we would play, the more fun we had and the more it was getting around. And we were touring a lot towards the end, and, and, uh, and it could have went really well, but it didn't. And I, I went on a hiatus, and <laughs> if you want to call it that. But, uh, and I, Chris was in New York, and I was in uh, D.C. I never bumped into him ever uh, after that. He, he died before... I knew what was going on. That he, I was in San Diego, and then I heard that he died. So I was just like, "Huh." So we could never get back together ever. And, and the bass player died, and one of the original guitar players died, and then the other rhythm guitar player died, and then um, oh yeah, it was, it was a die fest. And uh, <laughs> you know, and uh, but you know, I'm here, and which at a big surprise to everybody because uh, they were said I was the first to go. They're all, yeah, he's going. He's, he's the one that's going to go. And I'm like, yeah. Well, you, you proved everybody wrong, didn't <laughs> yeah, you? That's totally true. <laughs> this, I have a bionic knee and everything now. It's great. This, this is what's really <laughs> remarkable here. There are so many bands that they start off and hit that plateau. And then for whatever reason, whether it's natural causes, life, you know, marriage, or, or, or just a shift, they, they dwindle away. You have remained still consistent, even though with your breaks. What's interesting, tell you, since 2015, is that not only have you stayed pivotal, but you're still breaking barriers down. Which brings me to <laughs> your new member here. I'm sure before you joined this band, you were a fan, correct? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, as of just as playing music, I don't necessarily care about the genre. I'm a bass player. I like the bass and the drums. You know, there's certain, right there. there's certain things. It's like, man, I could play clave. You want an aningo. I mean, I like to play music, and this was fun music to play. I, that, it also goes with my political viewpoints or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, of course. I mean, if you don't know who the Battalion of Saints are in thrash, metal, punk, like, you should really check them out. Second Coming is the second oh, it's, coming. It's, it's, <laughs> it's one of the most pivotal records up there yeah, for sure it's, it's what's funny is they never they really nobody ever talks about it like that they always talk uh, uh well in america anyways um they just say that uh you know the oh yeah it was the misfits this or the black flag that and this and that and we were well, never just, part of those people 
Yeah. Well, see, that's the thing. We you were, we were friends you were, with you were, them. You were apart. Right? We were friends with them and all. I mean, we did shows with them, and it was very much a respectful I mean, thing. I mean, but yeah. as far as, like, uh, our sound and everything else was totally our own, and we knew that. And um, and it was kind of like when we used to come do shows from uh, San Diego up here, it would be like the Jets and the Sharks. We'd walk in, yeah, fuck, we're going to kick your ass, bitches. You know, <laughs> we're, like, we're, this is it. We're going to do it. And I don't give a fuck who dies. You know, and then, so, <laughs> and, you know, so it, was, it did. I mean, people with broken legs, broken arms, necks, stuff like that. Or shows. Remember, yeah, it was, it was awesome. Those Olympics yeah, shows. yeah. So it was like. They were frightening. But it was at the same time, it was like. We were friends with all these guys, but and they really loved us and stuff. But the thing is, you know, nobody ever talks about it. Like we're the dirty little secret. Yeah. You know, which is fine. I mean, I get it. You know, but at the same time, it's like, hmm. Well, yeah. I, I'm glad that we're saying it now. This is what's very, very interesting here. You're still doing it. You're yeah. still. I mean, you've gone through so many lineup changes. Now you finally have. Would it be safe to say a secure lineup? Yes, very secure. We have um, Mike Vega. On drums, amazing guitar uh, drummer, and we have a guitar player Nate Javier. Uh, guitar, it's amazing. This is we're ready to go. We got we got a new booking agent, uh, uh, Andy Rice. Andy on. Rice with uh, the Kenmore Agency. We're on a new label, uh, Southern Lord, and we're doing tours. We've got tours after tour after tour coming up right now. Christmas so like yeah, a, a Christmas song like Clean Patch. We're doing uh, uh, Jingle Bells, Batman Smells, but we're doing it Battalion of Saints, a la Battle of Battalion of Saints. <laughs> I had the privilege of listening to the new Battalion of Saints, and it's fucking remarkable. But my question to you is, is or to both of you, is how do you separate the legacy from the new material so you won't be, quote-unquote, labeled repetitive or trying to ride that historic, you know, train? And You know what I mean? Yeah. How, how do you keep that energy and creative energy? Well, Matt and I, we, we both kind of did this, and we were... I don't listen to what I could possibly play. I listen to everything else besides but what I would possibly play. So I have no idea when, I, when, we, go, when we start writing songs, I have no idea what we're doing. Really? And so Yeah, so when, 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 when uh, Matt starts playing a lead or a riff and I go, okay, get that, let's extend it to this way, and blah, blah, blah. And then we just start going back and forth, and then it's like, Okay, and then like, the day before, well, you know, we, we, we've played the songs a couple times live and stuff like that, so I'm getting the feel of it. And then so, like, the day before we're going to record the studio, I wrote it all down. <laughs> like, and, so, and Cheryl, Cheryl was, like, going, you're going to wait to the last minute? I'm like, yeah, just hold on a second. I got this. <laughs> is, is that, is that, is That's that how I do it. That's what I do. It's like, yeah. I, when we on did... On the edge all the way? Yeah, uh, yeah, when we did the original stuff, I mean, I was literally in the van writing out the f the, the last lyrics of it. <laughs> Shit, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was funny why, as fuck. Why fuck with it? <laughs> yeah, if it works, it works. You know what I mean? It's, it's the pressure. Yeah. And so it's like, fuck it. Yeah, bastard. You know? <laughs> And that's what I do. It's, it, it makes it also a lot of fun because it, I, I put pressure on myself that I don't need to. I could I could I could have took months to do it, but I, it's like oh yeah oh god you know sweat the whole nine yards. I'm like oh oh I like that you know and so then it's written then it's done it's history. Yeah. Period. What about you, man? I mean, obviously, you're aware of the legacy. How, how does that come into play when you're creating with George? Well, it, it was stressful at first because I was like, how do right? I make another second coming? And then I'm like, fuck that. We're not making another second coming. Exactly. Did you feel, did you feel that at first, though? Oh, yeah, of course. I, I would figure as a fan, like, okay, where's this going? Are they going to drop the ball or are they going to stay on it? Well, no, for sure. And, it's, and, and realize it's more of the essence. Speed doesn't necessarily matter. It does and it does it. I mean, you kind of have to have that mix. And, like, basically, I would write the riffs, sit with the guitar player and drummer, and then we get a good foundation, show it to George. George would be like, oh, I need this or that. Um, and, 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 and yeah, and we're, we're on. So, I mean, so it was kind of cool. We've been kind of just doing it. I mean, the guitar player now is gonna, wrote is writing too. Nice. So we should be able to, like, have, we already have half a record. Nice. So, you, so you're not a creative Nazi, right? Oh, God, no. It's just like, I like, I like the boys because they know what I like. You know, they really do. Yeah. If, they, if, if, if they hand me something, I'll be going, shit. You know, because like before, the guys before this, they would hand me stuff and I'd be going, 
this is what you've had for three years and you, this is all you can show me? Wow. No, unacceptable. You know, and so, and, 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 I, I mean, and I'm we did an ass about it, but I, Mike I have to hear it. Yeah. You know, I gotta, oh yeah, that feels good. You know, and it's like, you know, if it's, if I don't Mike feel and the- I in the studio were one take. Yeah. We, we were already like, bam, it's done. All right, now you have vocals for six hours. 